What's up divas and what's up divas? It's your girl April and it's time for Real Talk Wednesday. So you guys already know I've changed my scenery but I will be honest and tell you it is damn hot right now. Um, the lights from the cameras um, or just the light for the video is killing me. And um, I was really going to do this video elsewhere, like in my bathroom, because it's so much natural lighting. But I did do a video there today, which is on the makeup look and the hair that I have on. Um, I didn't even care what the background looked like. The background looks clean. You see my clothes in my closet. But, you know, it is what it is. It's super duper hot. So, girls, I will tell you this. I do have on my bra, which I actually did a haul on, which is Keeps Cheapskate Haul. And it's for tummy cinchers and bras that lift you girls up. So, I did that last week. At the end of the week, I would say, and I love this website. It's YYW. I'll post the information below. The bra that I actually have on was $7. I did say it was like 9 in my web, uh, my video, but it's actually $7. And, ladies, let me tell you one thing about these bras. They're amazing. But... But they give you so much back support so there's four hooks so it's wide enough around your back but they are really pretty bras like they do hold you up they give me like this confidence for my boobage area that you just would not believe like now I'm going to wear tank tops every day and I'm going to feel good about myself so besides that, um, of course, it is time to drink as usual. It is Moscato time, and this is the Sutter Home brand. I did put some ice in this baby because it is hot. And I don't know if it's just me, but when it's hot, I get hot from, like, drinking wine. So And it's already, like, 113 degrees outside in Arizona, so I'm really not trying to pass out on camera today with you guys. I don't really think I want to do that. But it is drinking time. So if you guys are wondering about the hair that I'm actually rocking, this is actually Peruvian Straight, and this is four bundles and a closure, and this is by a company called JS Luxury Hair. I will post the information for them below, but I'm also going to be posting up my review of this hair. I have like loads of videos that need to be uploaded mainly a lot of hair ones and a bunch of makeup ones i did do a haul that i will be editing this week so that i can post it up and it's all about makeup and it's actually really affordable makeup so if you guys have ever heard of ikatehouse.com you can get loads of beauty trend makeup and things of that specification on iKate House. Um, the entire look that I have going on right now is actually from their website and the lipstick that I'm wearing is the LA Girls New Matte um, Finish Pigment Gloss and this is in the color Bazaar. So it's a pinkish color and it's beautiful like I love it. The only thing that I'm not too pleasantly pleased sometimes about is it makes my lips feel a little like tacky or kind of dry. So that's the one thing that I didn't really um, fine, um, like very pleasing. But I, what I did different this time around is I did put a lip liner, so I'm hoping that will help um, avoid that issue with the lipstick because it's not directly on my lips. So yeah, so let's get into this video. I actually have three real talks for you guys today because I'm trying to catch up. So let's start off with the first one. And as always, if you want a real talk video featuring your discussion, your issue, you can always email me at muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com and please put in the subject line real talk and I will get back to you in an orderly fashion because there are some that are ahead of you as well. Okay, you guys, so the first one that I'm going to read, so this one here, I'm going to read this, and I'm like dying right now because I'm freaking hot, so if you guys can see me, I'm like sweating on camera, and I should go get like my little fan and like clip it to my chair, so that way I can like feel the freaking breeze, because the lights are going to have me pass out on camera and fucking die. Okay guys, so I like clip the fan right here. It's one of those clipping fans. I like to use it when I'm doing like my hair or my makeup um, because I just get really hot. I think it has a lot to do with being old or getting old. And I have central air at my house, but my bedroom doesn't get as cool as the rest of the house um, because the ceilings are really high in my bedroom, which really suck and it's upstairs. So, you know, heat rises. So, 
and the, as big as my bedroom is there's this little tiny ass vent which I'm supposed to get air from it's like a whale sucking a tic tac from a straw it's like really come on now so I sleep with this clip on fan like above my headboard like there's two of them and I have a ceiling fan and I have the air conditioning going just because I get super super hot so yeah I'm gonna just put this right here between my legs I'm gonna hold on to it yeah mm -hmm. and just feel the breeze so you're gonna see like my hair blowing with the wind okay and I hope you guys can hear me because I am not about to turn this fan off Hi, Mrs. April. I changed the names already, which is a plus for me because I don't have to think about anything too hard. My name is Rachel, and I'm 19 years old. I have always been a very good girl. Attended church two times a week all my life until a year ago when I stopped going on Wednesdays because of work. Anyway, I met a guy named Desmond that lived in my city. Three years ago on Facebook, oh, well, anyway, I met a guy named Desmond that lived in my city three years ago on Facebook. I really liked him because the story spoke to me. He said that he used to sell drugs and be in a gang, but he has changed his life. Well, we started dating, but broke up pretty quickly because he got kicked out of his mother's house for disrespecting her, and he had to move two hours away. Since then, we stayed as friends. I never stopped having feelings for him, so when he visited for my birthday in March of this year, he slept over, and we almost had sex. Before that night, he never tried anything with me besides kissing because he knew that I was a Christian and I wanted to stay a virgin until marriage. So the next morning, he went home. And when, we, and when he got home, despite my concerns, we got closer and closer again. So I lied to my parents in order to get on a Greyhound bus to see him for the whole weekend. And yes, girl, I lost my virginity. I don't feel bad about it, but I just don't want to do it anymore because it was a mistake. And I don't want any other man to think he can sample my milk without buying the cow. Wow. I want a ring next time, and I'm willing to wait. But he keeps mentioning that we're going to have sex again when he visits. Should I break up with him? Okay, Rachel. So, I just got to get some of this air on me because I'm like sweating and it, the wig don't help none on camera. Okay, so Rachel actually is, she says she is 19 years old. She was a virgin until like March, April when she went to see this guy Desmond that she met in her city um, three years ago through Facebook. Social media is something else. It's just crazy how it brings people together that you've never even fucking met before. And... I know she's a Christian and she's probably like, I'm cursing up a storm already, but lady, honey, this is real talk, so I do apologize. Um, but she doesn't want to have sex with him anymore because she wants to save herself. And all he keeps talking about is having sex again. Sounds like me to me that Desmond is a, her is a horny little bastard. That's just my take on it. If you don't want to have sex anymore, Diva, then don't. Rachel, I, I mean, I commend you because... Um, a lot of people have their faiths and their beliefs, and I truly commend those who do. Um, and they are really strong with their beliefs, and I truly commend those who do. Now, you did slip up because you're not a virgin anymore, and it doesn't make you a bad person. And like you said, you don't feel bad about it. And that's good because you should never feel bad about anything you do. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you should, but in this case, you knew what you were doing, and you know for a fact that you don't want to do it again. But, however, you got Desmond here who's hounding you like a, a horny-ass teenage boy for more and more and more coochie. Now, I'm just saying, but, you know, he sounds like he's real horny and thirsty. Now, I'll be honest and tell you that me and my boo, we talk about sex. He'll be home from his job in August. It was actually supposed to be in the beginning of August, but it got moved to August 24th. So, yes, he will be here, and you'll get to see him on camera. Um, but August 24th is my day to go to the airport and pick up my baby. But anyway, um, and he'll be home for good. Um, so we do, we talk every day, and we talk about sex, and we talk about what he gonna do to me, and what I'm gonna do to him, and all of this good, gritty, dirty stuff. However, we've been with each other for a while, and we've been each, uh, with each other prior to that because we have a child in common. So it is different for me and him to talk about sexual things and pleasures with each other because I already know you coming home to me. We have a kid together. We are a couple. 
and you already been home you've been here you had to go and leave for work whatever the case may be and if you guys are wondering do i miss him i truly do i really really do he's been gone for what i think it's like 45 days now um and it was just basically like a training thing and it prolonged it an extra 10 days which i was like pretty pissed off about um august 14th is already far so now the 24th but anyway so i do miss him i do miss him but here's the thing your boy desmond he seems like he's just out for the goods he's probably feeling like he's on top of the world because he's already got your cherry he's popped your cherry he's got your virginity and now all he wants to talk about is having sex with you that's all that's running through his mind does he have a life does he have things to do what else is there to talk about besides oh i'm gonna get you we're gonna have sex we're gonna have sex that's not a turn on for some women it, and and i'll be honest with you i don't really like to talk about sex all the time with my man either sometimes it all depends on the mood that i'm in because like i told you guys in a recent video of things i don't like about myself i'm a real shady person meaning not shady like i'm grimy but shady as one minute I don't want to be bothered, and the next minute I do. I'm really slim shady, like my cousins in them call me. Slim shady because I could just pop off in a second. And I'm just a type of person where I got to be in the mood for certain conversations. And if I'm not, please don't bring that shit up to me. Don't come near me with it. So, seems like Desmond just needs some work. And you know what, sweetheart? I wouldn't be the one to work with him. You're a Christian, and you have your beliefs and your faith. And on, and on, on the other track, on the other side of the track... You have this guy over here who is an ex-gangbanger and an ex-dealer. Um, his life may have changed somewhat, but his horniness has not. And if you're 19, I wonder how old he is because he's, you know, he's a, he, was, he was in a gang and he was a drug dealer. Like, goddamn, what was you selling drugs and crack like at 12 and 11? I mean, because his past is not that far along gone. And as well as that is... You really don't know the true story behind why he got kicked out of his mother's house. Disrespect, yeah, it may be a little bit more than that. He lives two hours away. Um, I would stay clear of him, Rachel. And I say this to you because all he's talking about is sex. He's already got the milk, okay? Don't let his ass sample it no more. And he's, and he's trying to sample. He's trying to get all the goodies, okay? Because that's all he's talking about. And then he's telling you we're going to have sex. We're going to have sex next time we see each other. Dude, whatever happens to we're going to go out and eat. We're going to go to the movies. We're going to go enjoy each other's companies. Whatever happened to we're going to do that. Now we're going to have sex the next time we see each other. Like, really? Who says things like that? It's not a turn on. To me, it's a total turn off. And to me, it seems like he's just out for one thing. You're like his far away pussy. Okay? You get on the Greyhound bus to come see him to give him some pussy. That's not cool for one. Yeah, you probably didn't intend on that to happen, but you did lie to your parents, which is not the Christian thing. Now, trust me, I am not about to pull the Christian card or the faith card because I don't judge. That's not my, that's just not me. You know, each person is their own. But what I'm saying to you, Rachel, is I would really steer clear of him because he really doesn't seem like he has your best interests at heart or your best intentions. And also, you really don't want to end up having a baby. I suggest that you save your goods, what's left of them, for your marriage. You want a ring, that's fine and dandy, but I don't really think that Desmond's the one that's going to give you the ring. Especially if he's really trying to get all the milk and all the goodies before he's even purchased the product. That's just my take. So, should you break up with him? Hell yeah. All he's talking about is getting some and getting some. Boy, please, go find yourself a rubber blow-up doll and handle your business. Stop looking to me for some extra fun at nighttime and where you can get off to because I'm not that one. That's what you need to tell her. And keep your Christian faith. Never let anyone, man or female, male or female, pull you out of your character and what you strongly believe in. And this goes for anyone. You're a Christian, those are those other, other people may not be, but you never let anyone pull you out of your character and out of yourself. You never step out of the box, especially when you have strong beliefs in something for someone that's so not worth your time. And to me, I really feel like he's not worth your time. And as for not going to church on a Wednesday, don't feel bad about that because like you said, you have to go to work and you have your studies and things. So as long as you still have your faith and your belief, Continue doing what you're doing and leave Desmond alone because he's just like a horny young boy that just really don't know when to stop. He want to fuck like rabbits and it doesn't happen like that in the real world. People have lives and things to do and sticking and plugging is not always on the agenda. So on that note, 
let Rachel know what you think about Desmond. What would you do? Would you break up with him? If you were strongly into your faith, would you break up with him? Or would you just break up with him because he seems like a jackass? Because me personally, yeah, I'm going to break up with your ass. You can keep asking me for no goddamn pussy and tell me, oh, we going to have sex. We going to have sex. Yeah, I bet not. Hmm. Okay, so the next person, she also changed the names for me. And I love it. If you guys send me emails and you got the names changed already, that would be, like, so, like, totally awesome. Awesome. So, anyway. Okay, let's read this one. Hi, April. To make this real talk simple, you can call me Stacy. My homegirl, Tanya, and her dude, Jay. I am in this huge dilemma because I love my best, my best friend like a sister. I've known her for 12 years. I can trust her with a great deal of my personal information, and she's always had my back. She has been talking to her dude, her dude, Jay, for four years, and they are serious about each other. But he is incarcerated and has been for the past nine years. She is head over heels in love with him. She has supported his lifestyle, for example, commissary money, on the phone, so they can talk, and he will be home in a few days, like six days. He has been breaking up with her and disrespecting her for the past couple of months. I think he is playing her so that he has outside conversation and, of course, money on his books. And someone waiting on him with a roof and food when he's released. She has four children and wants him to be fully engaged and active with her children in and out of her presence. Don't get me wrong, everyone deserves love, but to me, he's a freaking stranger with a criminal record. I find myself being insincere about the situation because to her face, I act as if I am not, as, I find myself being insincere about the situation because to her face, I act as if I am all for her future endeavors with this guy when I'm not. I want to tell her that I do not agree with giving any stranger leeway with my kids and not to mention she plans on giving him a key to her house. How do I confront her? Thank you for reading this, April. Blessings. Oh my goodness. Mm. I had to take a I had to really take a drink for this one cuz what the fuck? Okay, Stacy, your friend Tanya seemed like a damn fool. She's a fucking jackass. First of all, the nigga's been in jail for 9 years and Stacy's been dating the guy. Excuse me. The nigga's been in jail for five, um, for 9 years and Tanya, Stacy's friend, has been dating him for 4 years. So that means she met his ass in jail, okay? You've been dating him for four years. He's been in there for nine years. What is he in jail for? And on top of that, he's been breaking up with her on and off. She gives him money, goes and visits him, pays for the phone. And she wants him to be fully engaged in her kid's life. She's got four kids. She wants to give him the keys to her house. I'll take another drink for this. What the hell is wrong with Tanya, Stacy? First of all, I'm going to tell you like this. The nigga's been in jail for nine years. I'm sorry, but if I had a man that was in jail for nine years, you better hope that I wait for your fucking trifling ass because you did something real stupid to gain and gland your ass in jail for nine years. Yeah, true indeed, I waited for my ex-husband. But he did like 36 months. But he was already my husband. And of course he was going to come home and live with me because we were married. However, you've been with this guy for four years. He's been in jail for nine years. And you want him to come live with you or better yet have the keys to your house and engage himself around you and your kids? Are you out your fucking mind? That's what you need to tell your friend Stacy, real or some real shit. If that was my friend, because sometimes, you know, like they say about me, I don't have no filter and I don't have no fucking filter. And that's true. Just like with my friend that lives out here in Arizona. Stop fucking with dudes, okay? Like, serious on some real shit. Stop fucking with these low-life dudes. But if that were me and that was my friend, I would tell her straight up, you don't really know what this dude is really about. You met him while he was in jail. You've been with him four years. You don't even know him on the real world on the outside. He's been in jail for nine years. And you want to bring him around your kids? You don't know how he's going to react to kids. You don't know how his ki your kids are going to react to him. That's, like, ridiculous. That, you know, I, I don't understand women sometimes because it's, everyone does deserve someone to be with. It's true. Everyone deserves love. Love. It's, it's a known fact. We, nobody wants to grow old and be alone. Who, who wants to be alone for the rest of their life? Nobody. 
Nobody. Everybody deserves loves. But goddamn, you don't have to be fucking desperate about the shit and put your children in jeopardy because you want to have love and some dick every night. Like, really? I have to drink again. You really need to tell her, Stacy. Stop fronting because a real friend is going to be straight up, blunt, and real. If you are a real friend, you will tell her, listen, you are totally incorrect about what you're doing. And let her know, I love you. I love you as like you were a sister to me, but what you're doing is not right. You have four children, and your children don't deserve to have some strange man living in their home or entering in and out of the home when they please. You'll find somebody that's right for you. And if you really care about this man, then you'll see him without bringing him into the home of your children until you've been with him long enough on the outside. You know, when I first moved here to Arizona, um, I met someone, okay? And he was really handsome, really cute. He, was re he had this big ego, though, you know, because he was built. So he thought he was like God's gift to women or whatever. You know, mind you, he was the one chasing after me. I really didn't pay him no attention. He was from Jersey, um, but he lived out here in Arizona. And we were cool. But I never gave him my address. He could not come to my house. I would go to his house and we would go chill. But I, I'm really funny like that. Like, I don't let people around my kids. Like, especially men. Like, you can't come around my kids. You can't come to my house. You cannot come around my kids. Because I don't want to make my kids feel uncomfortable. And I don't want to look like a whore bitch in front of my kids either. And I just don't bring men around my children. And that's just just not me now as for the person i'm with now he is one of my kids fathers he knows i don't he knows all my kids he's known my kids you know he's we've lived together so when i had three kids we were living together two which were not his and one which was and then you know we broke up and then i got married and i had two more kids okay um and he met he's met them and they love him so it's a different situation but this guy right here your friend stacy is a fucking um She's crazy. She's out of her goddamn mind. Like, really? Who wants to bring a stranger into their home? She might as well go pick a hitchhiker up off the road and bring him home and, and, and welcome him in and, and introduce him to the family. And I'm wondering, did she ever bring her children down to visit him or anything like that? But and if she did, that was kind of fucked up, too, because they don't know him from a can of paint or a hole in the wall. Okay? So... Why would she bring this man around her children? He's in jail for a reason. And like you say, he has a criminal record. He's been in jail for nine years. So I'm pretty sure he didn't say, he didn't steal a little fucking candy bar from the corner store and go to jail for nine years. He did something major for nine fucking years. And if he didn't, then he's had a, a criminal record and they got tired of his ass and just put his ass in jail for nine years. Like, I'm not saying... Men that go to jail are horrible people. I would never say that because, come on now, let's be realistic. My ex was in a, was a jailbird, okay? But who meets someone that's already incarcerated? Like, I'm sorry, but if you and I wasn't fucking with each other on the outside before you went to jail, we is not fucking with each other now. And on top of that, it all depends on how long we was fucking with each other when, if your ass get arrested and go to jail, if I'm going to come see you. Because I am not about to give you my hard-earned money, and I'm damn sure not sending you shit in the mail. And as for coming to see you, please, I sleep in on the weekends. My time and schedule is not built around visiting and taking care of your ass, and you're not about to have the keys to my house. He's a criminal. What if she comes home and he, she don't got shit left? Tell your friend, sweetheart, she needs to wake up and realize what she's doing is totally wrong and that she'll find someone that's worth her, worth her worth. Like, some women get so desperate because they want a relationship that they'll just sleep with any fucking body and feel like, oh, I'm going to change him. And, yeah, he's a homeless guy. He's a homeless dude. But I can clean him up and wash him up and he'll be perfect for me and my family. Yeah, he's a little crazy. He's killed a couple people and he's been in and out of jail and he smoked crack and stuff. But he says he loves me, and we're going to make this work. Let me tell you something. She's been with him for four years, and he's tried to break up with her on and off while he's in jail. First of all, dude, who are you to try to break up with somebody while your fucking ass is in jail? You ain't got a fucking pot to piss in because it belongs to the jail, and you got to share it with your roomie, your bunkie, okay? And you want to break up with somebody while you in jail? Like, really, dude? You ain't got really much to lose, dude.
Like, seriously, nigga, you ain't really got much to lose. You want to break up with me? I wish a nigga would try to break up with me while he was in jail. Because I'd be like, bye, bitch. Bye, Felicia. You can kiss me right on between the two ba back pockets. Yes. Kiss me in between the two back pockets. And I got that one from my boo. He told somebody to kiss him between the two back pockets. Okay. So, basically... Break up with me if you want to while you in jail. Uh, sayonara. You doing me a favor, shit. I ain't got to call you. You ain't got to call me. I ain't got to write you. You ain't got to write me. I ain't got to come see you. And you ain't got to have none of my hard-earned cash on your commissary. Leave it up to me. Your ass will be starving. You won't have a motherfucking thing on your commissary, okay? While we were dating and you was in jail. Because I just don't roll like that. I'm not a... You put your ass in jail. Just like with my ex when he went to jail. The last time for this whole situation with me and him getting drunk and all this shit. You know, he went to jail. He... he violated probation he was drunk and he violated and we got into a big scuffle okay a big scuffle a big argument a big scuffle his ass went to jail did this nigga call me up and ask me could he borrow four hundred dollars he just got a job i was like what you making like a dollar a day did what the fuck you can't even pay me that shit back in the year i said are you serious get out of here click don't fucking call me with that bullshit Stacey, tell your friend to wisen up and, and, and go to her like a real friend and be real with her because you're not saying anything to her. It's not making the situation no better. And you're going along with what she's doing. So that's making her feel like, oh, okay, this is right. I'm doing the right thing. Okay, what I'm doing right now is, is right because you're agreeing with her. You can't agree with her. You got to let her know, listen, this is wrong. You don't even know him like that. You've never been with him on the outside world. If you really want to be with him, get to know him as a person while he's not incarcerated. And see what he's about. Don't agree with her because you're her friend. Friendship means realness. And if you cannot be real with your friend and tell them how you really feel and tell them about themselves, then you're not a real friend. And I'm sorry to say, but yeah, I may be a little blunt. And like I tell my friend at times, I was like, you stupid. You met the nigga in the grocery store and he's staying in your house. Now this is two months later. Like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I say shit like that because I'm correct. And if you don't want to speak to me anymore because of what I say to you, then you know what? Then fuck you. That's just me. And I'm sorry to feel that way, but you're not going to sit in my face and feed me a bunch of bullshit. And then you expect me not to say anything. And because I'm your friend, I'm supposed to go along with the dumb shit that's coming out your fucking mouth. Are you out your mind? A real friend looks out for each other. A real friend, that's what a real friend does. And if she gets mad with you because you told her the truth, then you know what? She'll get over it. And maybe it'll marinate in her fucking head and she'll think about it and say, oh, wow, Stacy's correct. I am bugging the fuck out over some fucking dick. Like, really? Why would I bring a total stranger that I don't really know around my kids? He could have told her anything about his criminal record. She don't really fucking know. She wasn't in court with him. She's not the judge. She wasn't the police officer. She's not the victims. She's none of that. So she don't really know what his ass is in jail for. He's probably got loads of other shit in his background history that she just doesn't know about. So I'm honestly telling you that if I was you, I would be a real friend. And I would be honest with her and tell her, listen, you ain't got to say you stupid, but you, you need to tell her, listen, you wrong. Don't give that nigga keys to your house and don't bring him around your kids just like that. I'm sorry. I just don't. I just don't fuck with everybody. Um, and I just have this thing where I don't bring men around my kids. Um, and I don't any. Um, I just don't because they've been around my ex-husband since they was little kids. And they've been around my boyfriend now that I've been with for years. Um, so, I just don't feel comfortable bringing any men around my kids. That's just me. Um, I don't know. I'm just funny like that. I'm really funny like that. If, we, if I have a relationship with someone, it's outside of my house and you'll never meet my kids. And that's fucked up until I feel like it's right. And if I don't feel it's right, if I don't, and if I don't feel like it's right, then that means you ain't nothing but a booty call to me and you're not really important. And... You know, that's how the last situation was with the dude from here who lived from was from Jersey. Like, you wasn't nothing but a booty call for me. Yeah, girls, yeah, girls be like that too. Um, we make booty calls or, like my friends, my bestie says, I be acting like a boy with my, my emotions and how I be acting. Like, I'm very insensitive sometimes because I, I don't have time for that shit. But don't bring no strange dudes around your kids. Like, these are your kids. Why would you put them in a situation because you the grown adult? You ain't acting like no fucking adult. You acting like a desperate ass child. Desperately seeking dick. Yes, desperately seeking dick. I'm sorry, but... Hi, April. I don't know where to begin. Even begin, girl. My name is... 
Gabrielle, and I'm 24 years old. My on again and off again boyfriend, Terry, of 60 years, has been blatantly cheating on me with the same girl that broke us up before. I changed the names, okay. Two years ago, I found out about him cheating on me with her, and I fought her and her cousins. Recently they, came, recently, they came to his house while I was there trying to start another fight, and he allowed it. During the past three weeks, she's been messaging me on Facebook, taking shots, saying I was just over there, how, how my pussy tastes, uploading photos while in the bed that with him and I share, and hinting that she may be pregnant by him. I'm trying to make the high road, but she's testing me. I've known him my whole life, and, I've, and I even have his name tatted on me. I love him, April, but what do I do? Just an update to my real talk question. She sent me another one. Sunday he came home and asked me, "Did I?" Sunday he came home and asked me, "Did I plan on going home?" He wants to be alone. Basically kicking me out. He lives with his mom, which was weird to me because he li he leaves for the army in a few weeks. I would have figured he'd want to spend more time together. I left to avoid a fight. I came back that night and found the same girl in the bed with him. It went all bad and cops were called. Today I found out I'm pregnant and he won't answer my calls now. Gabrielle, what the fuck is wrong with you? Okay, first of all, so Gabrielle's in a situation that she has been with somebody. Uh, she's 24 years old, and it's her on and off again boyfriend, Terry. I changed his name. Of 60 years. Of six years, excuse me. And he's been blatantly cheating on her with the same girl for two years. The girl is harassing her on Facebook, talking about how my pussy tastes. I just left there in the bed, taking pictures with him and her in the bed, and posting this shit on Facebook so Gabrielle can see the shit. Meanwhile, Gabrielle is getting kicked out of the apartment that Terry lives with and his mother. And when she comes back later on that night, that bitch is there that he's been blatantly cheating on her with. What should she do because she might be pregnant? What the fuck you think you should do, Gabrielle? I'm just going to be straight up like that. Straight up, now tell me, do you really want to love me forever? Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to be straight up with your ass. What the fuck do you think you should do? I mean, like, because this is real talk. You 24 years old. You're not four. You're 24. Okay, wake the fuck up. You having a baby, um, that's a blessing in disguise. He don't want to answer the phone. Good. Don't let that nigga answer the phone. Don't fucking call him no more either. You are so fucking vulnerable and so, like, to him, you're a pushover. So he's been blatantly cheating on you which means blatantly right there blatantly he knows you know about this bitch she's been texting sending messages on facebook asking you how her pussy tastes what the fuck is wrong with you i wish a motherfucker would blatantly cheat on me and you think i'm gonna be with him he's going to continue to cheat on you because you allow it if you're still with him and he's been blatantly cheating on you for the past two years with the same fucking bitch, he's going to continue. He's not going to stop because you're having a baby. He's not going to stop because you went to him and started crying, boo. He's not going to stop because you allow it. So what you need to do is pack your shit up, get your feelings together, woosah, and be on your motherfucking way. Excuse my language, but uh, bye, Felicia. Bye. Poof. Be gone. Please, no man is worth your sanity and your dignity and your pride and your self-respect. And right now, Gabrielle, you ain't got none of those things. Because had you had any of that, then you would not be settling less. There's a whole bunch of motherfucking niggas out there, a whole bunch of men out there in the world that you can find that's well worth your time. But it seems like you continuously go back to a fucking snake, a shark, a lowlife. So what? He's in the armed forces. Who gives a fuck? They put derelicts in the armed forces because they're not worth the skin on the bones, okay? So don't think that every man that's in the army is so worth it, okay? Because they're, they're fighting for their country. That's maybe because some of them ain't got anything else going for them and they ain't got no education or no background so they got to do something with themselves okay so don't think for once because he goes back to the army that he's somebody he's somebody important and i bet you i guarantee you that when he's on leave he's fucking another bitch in another country another state or wherever have be it okay that's what he's doing that's what terry's doing so you're gonna ask me what should you do bitch run that's what the fuck you should do and excuse my language i really didn't feel like calling you that but when i'm cool with somebody i will and i'm trying to give you advice and i'm being real with you that's what i end up calling you not no harm intended but terry i mean gabrielle fucking run please run be glad that he's not answering the phone don't call his ass no more better yet 
Change your motherfucking phone number. Let that girl have him because he's not worth it. He's cheating on you and he's cheating on her. And if she wants to settle for your sloppy seconds, then she ain't nothing but a ratchet asshole anyway. And let her fucking have him. You want to be on Facebook talking about, oh yeah, I'm fucking him and he's eating my pussy. And Bitch, are you asking me how my pussy tastes? How your pussy tastes? How about this, you stupid fucking hoe? How's my pussy taste? Because you're the one over there sleeping with him and I just left. So you're no better than me, okay? That's for them fucking hoes out there that think, oh, because I'm going to sleep with your man, how my pussy tastes and all this dumb shit they say out their mouths. You stupid hoe, okay? What you asking me some dumb question? You should ask yourself that question because that's my man and he really ain't even my man, but you're sleeping with him and he's sleeping with me, you dumb cunt. I don't even use that word, but yeah, I had to. Gabrielle, fucking run. Don't ask me no dumbass questions like what you should do. Go take care of your unborn. Get yourself some prenatal care. And please don't call that sorry ass nigga no more. Get your child support. Fuck him. He's really not worth it. He ain't living at home with his mother. So what? He's going back to the armed first forces. Please. That was the one that I didn't even need to really dig too deep into. But Divas, what would you do? The nigga is blatantly cheating on her. And the next bitch is there. And she's catching him. But you're still going back to him. Like, what is wrong with you? We all probably looking at you like right now like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Mm. So on that note, Divas, let Gabrielle know what you think about that question. What the fuck should she do? And you know what? If you're interested in a real talk or you want a unit made by me, you can always visit my website that's listed in the description box below, goingwiththewindwigs.webby.com. And I will see you guys soon on my next video. So stay diva and divalicious. And I love you guys. This is for my babies.